Mike, same question. Maybe you're representing the only free market view in this panel. I'll cut right to the chase. So what? Who cares? As long as the playing field is level, who cares what mechanism people use to raise money that they legally can raise, that the Supreme Court has affirmed they can raise? Despite all the talk we heard, and respectfully from Dr. Corrado, about money and politics, does any of that, should any of that infringe on your right as an individual to engage in the political process in our democracy, whether you're wealthy or not? This is what it's about. We have a perceived wrong here, but I don't see a wrong. I think we're chasing windmills. So what? So people contribute to political politics. So what? Is that a reason to infringe on your rights, on individual rights that are protected within our Constitution and that are affirmed by our United States Supreme Court? I'll be coming at it from that angle. So to me, I'm a, I'm a ball player. I want to play on a free and open level playing field with fair umpires. As long as you provide me that, let me hit the ball however I want, let me pitch it however I want, let me play the game, whatever the rules allow. So what? Thank you. Sir? Speaking on disclosure, Mike wants to make a point, and John, but I'm interested, you two organizations uh, come from different sides of the coin over here, often in politics, but I've known over the years that neither of your organizations has been willing to release a list of your donors. Why not? Uh, disclosure, again, same question to you. Your group does not disclose its donors. But we're a different organization. We're a 501c3, and we're offered even more protection by the United States Supreme Court because we do not in any way and cannot engage in political or campaign activity. We are, the, we are a public education nonprofit. You're a so think tank. We are, yeah, we are a nonprofit think tank. I want to make one point. All this non-disclosed money that everyone's talking about, we're making a mountain out of a molehill. 4.3% of money spent in federal elections was not disclosed. So over 95% was disclosed. This is not a major problem. It's a small issue, but it's not a major problem. The, the political spectrum is not turning on this 4.3% of money. John talked about your vote. Should we know how you vote? Dark voting? Come on. This is your right as a citizen of this country to engage in the political process without fear of recrimination. I have here example after example of citizens who have lost their jobs, had their homes raided, been publicly ridiculed because their campaign donations were made public and those in power found out about it. An attorney general in Wisconsin raiding a family's home because they supported Governor Walker there. So there are dangers to the type of disclosure that even Supreme Court Justice Scalia talks about. Does anyone think in this state that there's no such thing as political recrimination? Should you have to tell us who you vote for? Or should you be allowed to walk behind that curtain in the voting box? What's the difference with who, who you choose to support? You know, I, and I think the professor can, or Dr. Corrado can confirm this, but I was told, according to the competitive senator for, uh, whatever it's called there, the Center for Competitive Politics, that there were no federal campaign finance restrictions on individuals prior to 1974. The world didn't fall apart then. So what we're talking about is more laws, more regulations, more restrictions on your freedoms and your rights to participate in the democratic process. Do you really think that's the answer? Or should we just let it all go and let people compete on a level playing field? An open and free playing field. Thank you. Well, John, I think out every other person that wanted to use their free speech by just getting to it first. Now, fortunately, no one has done this yet. I hope that I haven't given any of you the idea that you're going to go ahead and do it now. But the reality is, the who cares part of that is, if you're then the senator who gets elected thanks to that one person who spent the $90 million to buy you the seat, when that person calls up and says, hey, I'd really like it if you voted against this agriculture bill that doesn't really help my business, you might not vote the way they want you to, but you got to know that you're probably not going to get a second term in the Senate, because that same person is probably going to spend the same $90 million against you next time. So, I mean, to me, I think there are a bunch of free market possibilities that could be explored as far as public financing. 
where every candidate got a certain amount of money, or every voter got a certain amount of money that they could say, rather than having to spend $50 out of my own pocket, I'm going to send my 50 political dollars that I get every year to the senator <laughs> or to the person running against the senator. But to me, there needs to be some sort of government involvement to make sure you don't have a system where the person in this audience, I don't, you don't have to raise your hand, but with the $90 million available, gets to pick who the senator is, and the rest of us just have to hope that we agree with them. Well, just a quick thing, Mike wants to go, we're, then we're going to take some questions from the audience, but I want Mike to get Very quick, to everybody. that hasn't happened for a reason, because it doesn't happen. How about this for an idea? You know why a lot of people don't donate to campaigns? And our center as a C3 is a beneficiary of this. Because they don't want to be have their name show up on a public report because they're afraid of recrimination. I agree with the doctor, I agree with Josh, that there is an imbalance. I don't necessarily see a problem with that. But here, how about this way to solve the imbalance? Instead of at $100, who's going to buy an election for $100 or $200 or $500? Why should your name have to go on a candidate's disclosure list? How about we up the limit to four or $500 for individuals so we can get more people contributing to the democratic process without fear of disclosure and recrimination? Disclosure sometimes infringes on your privacy and your rights and can lead to problems with your employer or public ridicule. So how's that for an idea that in order to get more of you and me, average citizens involved, that we protect our privacy. So there's a common argument to dis full disclosure. I agree on the high end, the big money has to be disclosed. But why should a little guy have to put himself out there at risk? Well, already, I think, under $200, you don't have to disclose now anyway, do you? That's correct. correct. Yeah, under the federal law. So we already have a Locally, it's, locally it's 100, right? 100, I believe, yeah. in Rhode Island. But at any rate, we're good. Hi. Um, so I, I don't really have a lot of this is going to sound really um, negative, but I don't really have a lot of hope for this country because uh, people like Donald Trump are gaining a lot of support from people who have billions of dollars behind them. Um, and people like Bernie Sanders and Obama raised all of their money through um, small donations or public funding. Is there a way, do you think, to keep America from turning into an actual corporation in the next 50 years? Um, without, you know, full disclosure or any of the other things that we're Well, I think the that. professor and I think John earlier just said that you got to get involved. You take, there's two ways I always thought to get power in this country. One is to have a lot of money, the other uh, as the corporate model. The other is the labor union model, to have a lot of people behind you, to have organizations, don't mourn, mourn organize, to get people of like-mindedness together and fight for your beliefs. And I still think that that, really is the most effective way to make sure that your views get across. And I'll open the panel. Sure, Mike wants to make a, a statement. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm just going to toot my philosophy. Your concern, where, where, where did you go, is, is worsened the more we put more laws and regulations. Because these kinds of campaign finance reforms, they benefit the incumbents, they benefit the status quo, they benefit the insiders because they have the money, the power, the influence, and the legal assistance to work around it. It's like a balloon. We've heard this today. Think, we try to stop it over here and it pops up over here. So we try to stop it over here and it pops up over there. It's a pointless exercise. So if we get rid of the law, we can free up the power of the people to compete and provide some balance in the election process. But these laws and regulations that most of the panelists here want favor the incumbents in power.